Hello everybody, hope you're doing marvelously well. We're gonna try out QES Labs Converter, the Pad 2. We're gonna review it and we're gonna do a little bit of a shootout against my converter that I've been using for years and know and love. So this should be quite marvelous. Okay, let's unbox this little baby. It's extremely well wrapped. These are made to order. They're made to order. A friend of mine is part of the, uh, I believe it's the Library of Congress, um, where they are taking all of the um, recordings, recording from like, you know, DAT tapes to wax cylinders to you name it you know, every different size of vinyl, and they're going through all this historical stuff and digitizing it. And they did a shootout of all of the different converters on the market. And what's interesting is the one they came back with that they liked the sound of most was made in Italy. And I, and I just wonder, I mean, it seems like the Italians, this is an Italian company, seem to have a very, very good reputation when it comes to building converters. This is very, very substantially heavy for a one unit. You can tell there's some serious engineering in this. Wow. This is gorgeous. <laughs> some serious weight to this. Pad 2 analog to digital converter. Handcrafted in Italy by QES Labs, Di Valerio Riccelli. Hopefully I pronounced your name properly. I apologize if I didn't. Got the word clock in, word clock out. Analog in, AES, really, really exciting. Okay, almost ready to rock. Um, we've got two songs. We've got the Shoot You Down by Little Empire, which is a combination of live drums and programming, some kind of minor EDM elements and some indie guitars. And then we're gonna use Dick Wagner's song, If I Had The Time, which is uh, the classic rock mixing course that we've been doing where all the proceeds go to St. Jude. So if you haven't already checked that out, please. Anyway, I'm very excited about this. Very, very excited. Now, there was one thing I was looking <laughs> with the filter. There's this low group delay, and then there is a classic mode. So I'm gonna print both. We're gonna print them both and have a listen. We just put signal through it, and we put signal for the library, and I'll tell you, this is a lot hotter, but we're not gonna touch the console. It doesn't make any sense to try and rebalance the console because the way the console works, if I, if I change how hard it's hitting the master bus, it will completely and utterly, massively, sonically change everything. So we're gonna print exactly the same way from this through both the QES and the Lavery. And we're gonna do both the classic mode and this other mode, the low group delay. The classic, according to the manual, emulates a standard, you know, what a normal converter would do. I've went and read a bunch of reviews while we were setting up, and they're stellar. Absolutely stellar for this. So I'm very, very excited. Also, when we put level through this, I will tell you these meters seem to have a heck of a lot of headroom on them. A lot of headroom, which was really interesting to see. Considering how hot it was printed into our DAW, it seemed to ha still have a ton of headroom. Meaning, I think if you use something else, another DAW with more headroom or in mastering and stuff like that, you could probably hit this even harder. I'm not an expert, but very, very impressed with the amount of headroom we seem to be getting. All right, let's give it a whirl. We've got two different songs. So he holds up three fingers. We've got two different songs. Like I said, the one that's pretty open and you know more organic, and then one that's a combination of EDM elements with an indie rock band. We're gonna print all three versions. That's the Lavery, and the Lavery is set completely and utterly you know, sterile. There's nothing, it's just at 48K. Both these sessions are at 48K. Same level coming out the console. It's gonna hear what the differences are. Should be very exciting. Oh, but we are gonna have to level match this for playback so you're not being deceived by the fact that this is a lot louder. So when you flip between the two, they're gonna be as close, near as darn it as you can in volume. If I don't hit the spot, give you chills, make you hot, I'm never gonna be in your back pocket. Get out of here, turn around, spit your game at the ground. Ain't got no sympathy for liars. Down. I ain't no sleep. 
Well, firstly, the Lavery Blue has been my staple and is a wonderful, wonderful converter. And I use it because so many people I admire use it as well. Now, the QES, I'm very excited to try. Very, very excited to try. I'm a little terrified because I love my Lavery. I really do. Um, but I've heard such good things about this QES, like massively good things. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just listen to Little Empire's track. This is the Lavery first. Pretty dense here. Let's play it around here. Got a peak um, on the master here of minus 4.4. So let's listen to this is the QES classic. I'm going to get these set up the same. As you can see, it's hotter, so I brought it down. Okay, it's almost there. It's at minus one five. So what I'm going to do is bring that down another point two. Okay, minus four point four. So these are both set the same now. The same peak. So this is all going to be about just hearing it. It's one point seven dB louder on average by the looks of it. So this is the classic. Summer, it's a lot of depth, a lot of depth. I'm listening through my Genelix that I know really well. The Focals sound amazing as well. Of course, the Callies, I use them all, but the Genelix I have been using for many, many years. So, okay, let's go to Lavery. I mean, it's a dense mix. It's not brick walled. Um, at all. It's not brick walled, but it's a very, very dense mix. To be honest, it feels like this, the QES could have a little bit more depth. There's definitely more feeling in the low end. Um, what I mean is like, it doesn't just sound like it's, it's low end just coming straight at me from the middle because this is a panned kind of bass line that's kind of do -do -do, moving slightly. And I, it's more exaggerated on the QES. When I say more, slightly more exaggerated than that than the Lavery. Um, so, you know, on a blind test, who a blind test. I mean, Eric, would you do the honors? Would you just randomly select one of these two and don't tell me which ones they are? I'm going to see which one I prefer. Blind test, only way to go. Next one, please. What's this one? 
Oh. <laughs> it just has more depth. Do you hear it like that? Let me hold the camera. I'm holding the camera. I'm not a... Okay. Uh, I'm not going to tell you which one's which. How do I do that? Okay. All right, listen. Two. Yeah, number two is the cue. Yes, again. Cue. I just I thought I thought if I if I swap them round opposite, you'll think that's exactly. too obvious. So I did the same order you did. <laughs> no, you can tell right away. You can tell that it's I just mean, a it's that bit more. Different. It's like a more more front to back. Yeah. Now, the Lavery Blue beats everybody else's IO we use. We went into um, we're going to go with something with more depth on it now. We went into Glenwood Place when we were mixing Legendary Child, and we had. The Lavery, we had the Bull, we had 192s, we had, I can't remember, we had like four or five different ones. And they all performed really fantastically. The Bull, Bull added so much color to it, so much transformer weight that we loved it. However, I'd mixed it from tape. So I felt like the Bull would have worked better for me, you know, in a purely digital domain. And the Lavery just seemed to be just, just bring it back the same every time. And we had an Apogee as well. Now, don't get me wrong, these are all incredibly good things, but the Lavery won in that situation. And Lavery make amazing stuff, but this definitely feels like it has more front to back. I don't know what they're doing differently, but it's fantastic. So we're gonna go, you know what, just out of interest, I'm gonna listen to the other one, which is, what is it called? The low group delay, so let me set that. Pretty remarkable, pretty remarkable. I think I'm hearing what's going on here. I have absolutely no understanding of how clever this is and what, what he's doing here, but the low end seems to be just a little bit tighter and more focused. And I, I would love to know why, but it just seems to be on the low group delay, just a little bit tighter and more focused. So it peaked at four five there. Now this is an all star lineup. Um, I'm sure many of you who follow me know what this is, but this was done for St Jude's uh, Children's um, Hospital. Um, we did it for charity, and um, oh. Jennifer Batten's playing on this. Um, Leland Sklar's playing bass. Elliot Easton's playing guitar as well. I mean, there were so many great people sang on this and played on this. Mark Farner, the original singer of Grand, Grand Funk Railroad, sang on this. It was, it was absolutely wonderful. And it was recorded live. So this is a lot of players all playing live. And if you've seen the multitracks, there's no editing. So this is a real performance, very organic. You know, no drum samples were harmed. This is the sound of the drummer in the room. Okay, so let's get these balances the same. So it's 2.2 dBs worth of difference. I mean, it's just, it's got, it's louder. But once we bring it down, it's gonna give us a more accurate view. Okay, now they're gonna be at the same level. So I'm, I'm gonna start off listening to QBS. Save a little child. All right, going to our the fan favorite, the wonderful Lavery. Save a little child. I'm not sure what QES is doing, but you can clearly hear 
so much more detail and that acoustic on the left hand side. Can you hear it back there? Isn't that crazy? It's just, there's more width. Save a little child. It's interesting, the Lavery performs really, really well on this, but the QES definitely has the edge. Now that's on the classic setting. Let's uh, get the levels on the uh, group delay. All right, so this is the low group delay setting. Save a little child. Save a little child. If I had the time, I could change the world. It's definitely more focused in those lows. Now back to the classic mode, I'm gonna start it on later. In this instance, um, I like the classic mode more than I like that kind of tight and shapening of the lows. Um, but the difference is negligible. It's absolutely fantastic. It is interesting. I was expecting to hear a little bit more extra differences on the more open track than I would on the more dense. On the denser track, it's stark. I think probably what it is when you've got, and this is the naive Warren speaking, no expert here, but I imagine if you've got converters which are able to maintain that depth, when you've got a really, really dense track, with, you know, these aren't square waved off on Lily's track, but, you know, it's definitely a darn sight more aggressive than this one, which has huge dynamics. And with that kind of denser thing, it does feel like the stark difference between the depth that you're getting from the QES. Um, and then when you go to this other track here, which is a lot more open, you know, it's the differences are there, but they're not as big. So, Definitely for modern mixing with complex tracks. Wow, the QES is just gonna, as they say in America, gonna kill it. No, it's really, really good. Very, very impressed. Absolutely amazing. Thanks ever so much QES for sending us this. Um, I think this is gonna find a little space in the world down there. Eric, we're gonna have to reorganize some stuff to make this all work. Unbelievable, really, really great stuff. Well. Okay, so you can download these files. We'll have them so you can download them and you can listen for yourself and you can make your own conclusions. I think if you want to time align these, for instance, you could also maybe flip the phase.
Okay, so we'll just we just nudged it to like phase coherent. We flipped the phase on that top one, the polarity. Wow, interesting. So there's definitely a lot of different artifacts. So they're hearing very, very differently. That's so crazy. I've never done this comparison. And I'm not sure there's any real science to it. You know, I mean, there's a science to it because we can do it, but it's, it's completely different information. Now, as to, that's the differences, that's what cancels out and what's left. So ambience and low end. So you remember when we say it sounds like it's got more depth to it and there's more defined low end? Well, you're hearing additional low end and you're hearing more an exaggerate, not an exaggeration, that's the wrong word, but more ambience that I recorded, all of those effects I put on the vocals, etc. So it's crazy. So it really is those things. Huh. That's absolutely fantastic. Well, there you go. Um, download the files, play with them yourself. Um, now, bear in mind, I am recorded in a high, recording in a hybrid setup. So nothing ever comes back exactly the same in a hybrid setup. That's just a reality. So there's going to be other things at play. We didn't touch the console whatsoever, but, you know, voltages vary and all this kind of stuff. So there is always going to be those kind of discrepancies. So, you know, make up your own mind. All I can say is that we're impressed. It sounds great. Really, really great work, QES. Very, very impressed. Hey, everybody, please, if you've used these converters, please leave any comments and questions below. Well, let us know how you've come, what you use, why you use it, you know, what your experiences are. It's absolutely marvelous. Would love to know what you think. And uh, speak to you all again very, very soon.